Hackers, I'm pretty sure that everyone here has heard something about hackers. <laughs> Mostly bad. <laughs> but I want you to forget everything that you thought you knew about them. Forget everything that you heard in the media about them. Because we're going to go on a little journey together. <laughs> Protecting this country from unwanted foreign influence was an original intent of the framers of the U.S. Constitution. In fact, in 1788, Alexander Hamilton acknowledged that protecting uh, America had, you know, we had, this, we had this big ocean and that there was this, this, this was a huge element of our security and that this was of utmost importance. However, at the same time, he acknowledged that one day, with the advancements of technology, distant nations would become next door neighbors. And in no time or place is this more relevant, is his wisdom more relevant than in the information age of today. And to no population does it impact more than hackers and those impacted by hackers. Now, you may be wondering what hackers have to do with revolutionary thinkers. And the media has overwhelmed us with imagery and stories about cyber breaches and the black hat hackers behind them. And this has caused us to construct mental models filled with heavy elements of criminal symbolism. But I am here to tell you that hackers are much more than hat colors and criminals. Society is incredibly confused by hackers. In fact, most of the imagery that we see of them includes a dark figure shrouded in a hoodie and antisocial, like Mr. Robot. Kind of like this person right here. <laughs> and to make matters worse, if you were to look up the definition for the word, you would find strong elements of conflict. On the one hand, a hacker is someone who's unskilled and hacks things together. On the other hand, there's someone that leverages their technological prowess for illegal gain, with both definitions rooted in fear. Recently, someone asked me what I did for a living, and I responded by saying, I'm a professor and a consultant and an ethical hacker. <laughs> this person looked at me with a very confused look, and they said, wait a minute, how could you be a professor what company would pay you to do illegal stuff? And what university in the right mind would allow you to teach students how to do illegal things? This conversation went on for quite some time, and this person just could not fathom that there were good hackers and that they would have anything worth sharing or teaching to others. But my friends, I want to share with you that hackers are much more important than you may have previously thought. There are tons of, of problems in our world with regard to, that require innovation and experimentation. And this is where hackers excel. This is precisely why I research hackers and how they think. Now, that's not the entire story. I wrote my first line of code at 10 years old, and I'd hacked into my first major corporation by my 13th birthday. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. <laughs> but I was an inquisitive child. I asked lots of questions. Usually there were questions that the adults were not ready to answer. <laughs> but that never stopped me from pursuing what I thought were the solutions to the problems that interest me. We had a lot of books around the house, and I specifically remember reading the basic physics of radiation therapy in the fourth grade. I was really geeky, OK? <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> But my willingness and interest in asking so many questions, even when people were not ready to answer them or, or maybe didn't know the answers, coupled with a natural proclivity for technology, led me through various levels of education, a life as a hacker with varying levels of ethics, and eventually becoming a professor 
at a university and an owner of a consulting company who advises companies on the hacker mindset. Now, to conduct this research, for me to explain that story, I want to show you this photo. This was a photo that I took driving across Europe. Because in order for me to conduct my research, I traveled the world to meet some of the best hackers. And my intent was to understand how they solve problems. I met a few dozen of them that were considered elite by their peers. And then I took what I learned from them, and then I surveyed another couple hundred hackers. But this journey was not without its personal challenges. In fact, my employer disapproved, disapproved of my research, and I almost lost my job. I acquired massive amounts of debt because I did everything out of my own pocket. And I tore two discs in my back on one of the trips. So whenever people ask me about my research, I say I went as far as I could without losing a kidney. <laughs> but the challenges that I went through were worth it because I learned that hackers are a significant source of innovation. Our society is filled, and it's a changing landscape, ever evolving, full of complex technologies, and lots of poorly understood and challenging problems. These are precisely the kinds of problems that hackers are adept at solving. The hacker ability is a mindset. It's a mindset that includes various cognitive skills and traits. But hackers leveraging their abilities to solve these ambiguous problems are precisely why they are so important to world-changing innovation. Being a hacker is a mindset. It's about leveraging cognitive skills and traits like creativity and curiosity to understand ambiguity in their environment. And then to leverage that understanding and what we call just-in-time learning to eliminate that ambiguity. Just-in-time learning requires dynamic shifts in thinking patterns. And as you hear me talk about shifting in thinking patterns, I'll give you an example of what that means. If you've ever seen someone who speaks maybe 10 languages, and they shift in between those languages almost seamlessly, almost without thinking about it, or people who have experienced multiple cultures, and they shift in between those cultures and those countries and those boundaries, almost without thinking about them, this is what we refer to as shifting thinking patterns. And the best hackers are able to shift thinking patterns across technologies, across languages, across systems, across people, understanding people and behaviors. Now, in the cybersecurity community, we have a saying that it's not a question of if hackers will get in, it's a question of when. That's because to hackers, there's no such thing as failure. Everything is just a revision. And hackers apply this mindset to all of their problems of interest. This is precisely why hackers are changing the world around us. We're seeing the hacker movement take place in lots of places. Consider for a moment civic hacking, biohacking, life hacking, and now even space exploration. We're seeing this all over the world where many different companies are leveraging the hacker mindset to challenge the status quo, to ask the question, what would happen if? That really exists at the core of the hacker mindset. And because of this, we're seeing many of our top advancements in society being created by hackers. That's exactly why we say that being a hacker is a mindset and not a technical skill. Marie Curie, Galileo, Leonardo da Vinci, Nikola Tesla, and many more, they were all hackers. Pushing the boundary, having the audacity to push the boundaries further, to challenge what we believe were the intersections of different levels of intellect. And at the core of all of this is 
our relentless curiosity, our playful exploration, our adventurous creativity. And this is what's necessary for the innovation that we're seeing today. Now, I want you to take a good look at this photo. Take note of the address, okay? Because we're gonna come back to it. But many of the world's most successful companies are leveraging the hacker mindset for that success. Tesla, Facebook, Twitter, Square, the list goes on and on. That's why the world's most successful companies are being run by hackers. In fact, when Facebook went public, Mark Zuckerberg wrote a letter to the shareholders thanking them for their support, but telling them, we will not run this company like a traditional company. We are going to run it using the hacker way. And if you remember where the headquarters are on one hacker way. Now, I want you to take in what we're talking about here, right? I want you all to question what it means to be a hacker. And I want you all to strive to have a better understanding of the hacker mindset and a better understanding of yourselves and the world that you exist in and identify things in your world worth hacking. For the children who are asking questions that it seems that no one else is interested in, continue to ask those questions. For the parents who are confused by their child's interests, try encouraging them. They may one day surprise you by sharing their ideas with the world. And don't be afraid to ask what would happen if. I think that we should all strive to be hackers because hacking is an artful form of expression. In fact, hacking is an artful form of not problem solving, but solution finding. And I encourage you all to find things in your world, in your community to hack, whether it be civic hacking, whether it be life hacking, and if you're unfamiliar with these terms, look them up. You may be surprised. I want to encourage you to leverage hacking the way that many of these companies are in the renewal of our world, in the reinvention of our society, the way we communicate, our lives. And I want you to open yourselves up and welcome the idea of thinking like a hacker. My name is Tim, and hacking is my art. Thank you so much.